On the left hand of the screen here, we see uh, the brain of a normal elderly control around 75 years old. This person was cognitively normal, walking normally. On the right hand side, you see the brain around the same level of a person who's had a stroke. So most people's understanding of stroke is the common uh, situation where someone suddenly becomes paralyzed or lose vision or has a sensory loss or can't speak. That's what we call overt stroke. The stroke is this dark black area here in the brain. So essentially the brain tissue has been replaced by proteinaceous fluid. However, there's something called covert stroke. They used to be called silent strokes because it doesn't cause obvious symptoms at the time it happens. See that little black hole? Um, that little black hole, they're about three millimeters, very, very small. Those are the silent strokes over age 65. About 25% of people actually had these little, tiny, small strokes. All of these could happen without the person knowing except that they start to be slower, they're not as energetic, they're apathetic, they're not initiating things, and they're just not as high functioning as they used to be. So-called white matter disease is even more common. And so in the same studies, they found that 95% of people over 65 have some degree of white matter disease. I don't think you need to be a neurologist to see that there's something very different here in this person's brain. So you can see these confluent blotches of white matter change around the ventricles. This person would have not only the short-term memory problem, but they would have this executive difficulty, uh, problems making decisions. Uh, there could be apathy, there could be some irritability, there could be depression, and this person is very likely to have poor balance. We need to be concerned about white matter disease and covert stroke because they're very common in people who have an overt clinical stroke and they have a bad effect on how the person recovers. Whether it's actually a hemorrhage type of stroke or a blockage type of stroke, people do worse when they have the white matter disease and the covert strokes. So we have to attend to it and understand it and do something about it in order to help people recover. The third reason that it's really important is because of the relationship to Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is the commonest single cause of dementia. Stroke would be the second single cause of dementia, but the truth is, in older people, they cohabit. They live together, and it's the combination that makes people most likely to be demented. Because in old age, the problem with Alzheimer's disease is that people cannot clear the amyloid from the brain, and this kind of disease makes it harder to do so. So the covert strokes, we think, relate to blockage of the little arteries in the brain, whereas the white matter disease probably relates to disease of the venous system, the drainage system of the brain. The cost is about 15 billion a year right now. And because of our aging population, in a generation, those costs will be about 150 billion. Now having mentioned how important these diseases are, um, the question is what can we do about it? And uh, that gets tricky. I think one of the most important things people can do, whether they are thought to have Alzheimer's disease or stroke, is exercise. Because it looks like that can help protect the brain and slow down the rate at which it deteriorates. And also following a heart healthy diet is something that we all can do in order to protect our brains and help ourselves if we have these conditions. For white matter disease, it's a bit trickier because we really don't understand how it works exactly, except that we think it may relate to hardening of the veins deep in the brain, and it causes leakage from the capillaries and the veins around the deep areas of the brain so that you end up with a kind of a boggy brain that interferes with information flow. We are trying to understand ways to protect against the injury caused by this white matter disease. And there's a great deal of effort going on in trying to find disease-modifying therapies for Alzheimer's disease. So I'm very hopeful that we will have new solutions in the next five to 10 years for management of this really significant and disabling disorder of older individuals.